it's been a while. We've worked together for a while now. Where were you before we started working together? Um, so I was pretty lost in my PhD. I'd, I'd pretty much written my whole PhD thesis, but my supervisor really didn't like um, my thesis. And he was basically going to tell me he wasn't allowing me to submit my thesis at that stage. And basically my course was over. So after I'd done all this work, all this research, had amazing staff, um, I just didn't know how to write it properly for academic writing, I guess. Um, yeah, he was ready to can my whole PhD. So, and that's pretty much, I came to you in tears, just looking for someone to be able to help me and guide me. Um, and it actually, it didn't take long. Like once you broke it down and said, oh, this is, you're just missing, you know, a specific writing style. You taught me the peer style of writing, um, census topics. Like it wasn't, it wasn't even that much that you had to teach me to do um, to get my writing from the stage where he said it was not acceptable to the stage where I was basically able to submit my PhD. Yeah. It, you know, I remember, Vern, it was really, you were at the depths of despair and, and you were really thinking about just throwing in the towel yourself and giving up where you've done such important, you've done such important work. Um, yeah. Can, can you say a little bit about, uh, about that work? Cause I think other people don't know uh, so much about what you're doing, but I, I think yeah. it's a difference in the world. I, I really like working with you, Vern, because your work really does make a, a difference and you're so passionate about it. So yeah, when I when I came to you, I was um, I was as low as you could possibly get. I remember I was crying. I was I was so so upset. I couldn't believe that I'd potentially lost my PhD. Um, the work that I was working on, I'd be working on river dolphins in Cambodia that are, that are on the verge of extinction, and these dolphins really don't have long left. And I spent five years working in Cambodia collecting all my data. Um, I then spent another three years working in Colombia, doing genetics, working with a geneticist on some of the data from Cambodia. So it, during that eight year period, I basically collected everything you can imagine from these dolphins. I did necropsies on them. I did toxicology. I did genetics. I did pathology. I did histology, microbiology, everything you could possibly collect from these dolphins I did. And then it was tying everything together and, and really figuring out what was killing these dolphins. So for the past at least 30 years that we know of, um, no dolphin calves have survived. Mm -hmm. So they've had a really huge effect. So because of that, the population hasn't grown. It's basically been effectively just um, a still population with no growth. And so slowly they've just been dying off and it's going to come one day where basically it's just the end of the cliff and there's no more dolphins left because they're not breeding they're getting too old they can't breed and it's a really sad story so my story and my um research really needs to get out to, to let the world know what's going on and it was such a complex project there wasn't one single underlying factor so it was incredibly complex I use epidemiology to tie all the data together and to do all my um, quantitative statistical analyses to figure out what was going on and yeah it's incredibly challenging but by the same token I also had 46 scientists um, trying to tell me that I was wrong so yeah. I will no, no, definitely <laughs> in some ways we said when the dogs are barking it can be a sign that you're on the right track because you're really pushing the envelope and and you really had, had to fight hard for for this research but you, you also know you're doing it for the right cause and to make a difference and that's also why I want to see this research get out there I mean in working together you mentioned some of the things that helped you did you have any specific aha moments because I do remember there was a point where all just kind of seemed to click and it, it was almost as we didn't need to meet anymore because you felt good and you knew what to do. do do you remember anything any aha moments or breakthroughs like that yeah, I do. I remember, like, I watched a lot of your videos on um, the Facebook group, and everything started to make sense. And I, I, I remember taking your analogy of a house and having a good structure. And I went, you know what? instead of building a solid foundation, I've got everything there, but I've got all my windows in one pile, all my doors in one pile, all my roof tiles in one pile. And I didn't actually pull it all together in a, in a, good way where it looked like a building I knew what I was talking about um, and my brain works different to other people I'm a bit on the Aspergic spectrum so I know where everything's filed away and it makes complete sense to me but to someone who wants to see the whole house 
they can't picture it from my piles of um, doors and windows. So I had to learn how to put that all together to make it look like a house. And I loved that analogy. Mm. And so I had everything there. I had the bricks and the mortar and everything. I just had it in the wrong places. And once I followed your different um, guides and realized how to structure it together, how to use my headings to make the correct structure and just put what I had in the right places, everything just started to fall into place. And it was it was almost like having a recipe. And as soon as I followed the recipe for one chapter, all the others just fell into place. And that was um, that was really a key moment was realizing that you know all that that time hadn't been wasted I did have it it was just my my brain just works a bit differently and I needed you to guide me as to how to how to write so that everybody else could understand not just me yeah and and I remember it really turned around your relationship with your supervisor too because he he was had seemed to have really right he was going to throw the towel had no confidence and then he started to understand wait hang on wait a second there's some really good stuff here and uh, yeah, yep. it, it massively turned out around that relationship. Um, and that's, I think when you, you you spoke to me one day and you said to me, you know, you need to write in his language the way he understands. And um, he's a really pedantic supervisor. And so let's write to his academic level. And if you aim as high as you can possibly aim, which is aiming for publication, yeah. he'll be able to read your your chapters and know exactly what you're saying. And so all we did was we changed my writing style to, to aim for journals. And straight away, there was a difference in his attitude. And it was the exact same content, it was just exactly. in a different yeah. way. Um, it was the same material. You had all this good stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I just kind of supported you to bring it together in an in, in easy structure that made it easy for others to understand all the brilliance that was there. Um, Vern, so where are you now? What, what's, uh, what, what's next? Um, so I've submitted my whole thesis. It's busy being examined at the moment. So I'm feeling very, very confident because I, I feel like I submitted a really um, great thesis at the end of the day. And I'm now ready to publish. So I was actually really scared of publishing um, because I had such a bad experience with um, 46 scientists all trying to discredit me and trying to can my work and I had a really rough time. Um, I honestly thought I'd never publish. And if it wasn't for you and just giving me my confidence back and giving me my academic voice, I had it, but it had been so trampled on that I didn't feel confident, um, you know, telling the world what I've found. I now feel like I can stand on my own two feet and stand up and say, well, this is what's happened. This is what I found. The data speaks for itself. It's all quantitative. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of where I've come now and I'm ready to publish. So awesome. I'm here with you now, ready. We're going to do this. We've probably got about eight papers that are going to come out of this work. So I just feel like we've made such an awesome team together. Awesome. That's what this is about. These papers are so important. We're definitely going to get them out. And uh, yeah, I, I, and I, I love that because that, that kind of confidence, because I remember you just said at the beginning, you were really beaten down and have that confidence. I mean, that carries over. It's not just about this project, but it, it's everything in, in, in life and in, in your career uh, going forward. So yeah, Vern, one of the things that I, I see so often though is as students are, who are maybe waiting and they get themselves into a panic and they're, they're on the verge of also their, their supervisor is going to push them out of the program. I mean, what would you say to people who are maybe don't know what it's like to work together and maybe thinking about it or thinking about us or even another kind of uh, support out there? What would you say to them? Who are in that kind of position. I'd probably say like um, meeting you has been the single most valuable resource of my entire PhD and I mean you, you use a lot of resources in the PhD wow. pro program as any student would know but I wish I'd found you sooner and I wish I knew what you were going to bring to the table to help me so if I had an inkling of, of how quickly I would have turned my PhD project around um, I could have finished my PhD three years ago so instead I struggled along tried to do it by myself um, did so much extra work that I didn't even need to do um, if, if I used to talk about my thesis looking like a castle and I, I built one of these most intricate 
gothic castles with all the lace trimmings and everything it was just there was so much detail in there and in the end what my supervisor wanted was a medieval castle he didn't want all that um superfluous detail and so I actually wasted a lot of time putting in so much extra stuff sorry my kids are don't, don't worry but um, exactly we wanted to free up time so you could spend with your with your children too uh, which is, yes. is important if you think of the time you've gone in circles that it could have been with them oh absolutely and by the time I cut out um everything I cut out of my thesis I cut out 30,000 words that was a huge amount of extra work effort reading um you know that was a lot of work that I cut out to make it not so flowery so if I had learned these strategies in the beginning absolutely I would have saved myself months and months of heartache and and being able to really control the flow of my PhD so if if I could go back in time and change one thing I would have met you a lot sooner and started with you more towards the beginning so I, I would have known what I was doing I probably would have finished my three-year time instead of taking quite a lot longer to finish so if I could suggest anything to PhD students it is seriously get on board do the fast track like this was the single most important resource of my whole PhD. Fern, thanks for sharing I think that's going to really help a lot of students lift the lid and just kind of understand what it's really like inside the program.